What's up everybody, it's your girl B. Octavia and I am back with another video. Today's video will be Mafia Ties, episode two. Mafia Ties, the Italian mob. What can we learn? What do we know? As I take you back in time, I will always make the lessons known as we can learn a lot from those that came before us going by certain codes and morals that make you the man that you are supposed to be or the man that you are i was going to do john Gotti second because i did sammy the bull or as episode one but i found another john to talk about and that john is john dillinger now we talking about mafia ties and i don't want y'all to get confused right but within talking about street legends in general i feel like john dillinger's name fits well into the mold of, of a street legend i'll tell you why and he wasn't called a american gangster for nothing now I remember I talked about him in the introduction of Mafia Ties and I believe somebody commented and said that they wouldn't consider him gangster and all of these things and it stuck with me because ever since I was a shorty I knew who John Dillinger was whether it be documentaries or movies I really grew a certain admiration for him I feel like he was very confident even at the highest points of his criminal career and he really never backed down he never stopped until the day he died now john dillinger was a american gangster during the time of the great depression the great depression was a severe economic depression that lasted a total of 43 months from august 1929 to march 1933 in this time period thousands were losing their jobs causing poverty that affluent areas and high sedity areas were not used to alcoholism long-term drug abuse and suicide was very high at this time john herbert dillinger was born june 22nd 1903. he led a group known as the dillinger gang which its known members were babyface nelson homer van meter russell clark john red hamilton charles mackley ed Schaus, russell clark harry copeland tommy carroll Eddie Green, John Paul Chase, Eddie Bentz, Tommy Gannon, and Pat Riley, or Riley, or however you say it. I apologize if I, you know, whatever. I'm not good on names. Totaling in 15 men, including John Dillinger himself. The gang's recognition stems from from a string of bank robberies during 1933 to july of 1934. during their reign the dillinger gang killed 10 people and wounded seven they pulled off a total of three jail breaks which wounded two guards and killed a sheriff many of its members were killed or permanently imprisoned However, the FBI's main focus was John Dillinger himself. He was public enemy number one. John Dillinger was imprisoned several times and escaped twice. His criminal charges ranged from bank robbery, murder, assault, assault of an officer, and grand theft auto. He was charged with murder but was not convicted. In Mr. Dillinger's early life, his mother died when he was very young. He was only three years old. She passed right before he turned four. 
His older sister looked after him until their father remarried. His father was a harsh man and only Lord knows how their relationship was in John Dillinger growing up. In 1922, he was arrested for auto theft and at that point, his relationship with his father declined. His father didn't want a criminal son and he did not want his son to go down that path. He had hopes that his son would turn it around early, but, but it was a battle. From that arrest, he enlisted into the Navy. He got married in 1924. And as pressure mounted of keeping a job and keeping a happy wife, he decided to go on a robbery with a friend of his his first one. As a result of this robbery where these men got $50, they were spotted by a minister that recognized them and he alerted police. During the robbery, Dillinger struck a victim with a machine bolt on the head. They were arrested the next day. Dillinger's co-defendant pleaded not guilty but Dillinger confessed to this crime. The minister that spotted Dillinger and his co-defendant knew and recognized Dillinger because he knew Dillinger's father. And the minister and Dillinger's father speaking to one another about this, they got Dillinger to confess and to own up to the crime he was convicted of assault and battery with the intent to rob and conspiracy to commit a felony. He was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison for his crimes. His co-defendant was sentenced to 2 to 14 years. Dillinger was held at the Indiana Reformatory and the Indiana State Prison from 1924 to 1933. As a result of his lengthy sentence and a infection that he developed while in prison, Dillinger had a certain vendetta to get out and tear shit up you know, to get out and put his plans in motion. He befriended better criminals than himself, and in turn, they taught him how to get away with certain crimes. He started planning robberies they would all do together once released. On May 10th, 1933, after serving almost 10 years in prison and due to his father's work behind the scenes, he was paroled. His father was able to get a certain amount of signatures on a petition to get him paroled and that's what happened. So although, although Dillinger viewed his father as a harsh man, he really did love his son because he could have really gave up any hope didn't try to help nothing but he really saw that his son could do better he saw better for his son and he just wanted him to be a honest working man that's what it seems like to me now their relationship you know and how they talk to each other their dynamic how he felt in his childhood growing up without his mother respectfully you know it probably was difficult it probably was very difficult but i hope that he saw that his father wanted the best for him he was released at the height of the great depression upon release he did exactly what he said that he was going to do after evading police in four states for nearly a year, Dillinger was wounded. He got wounded during a shootout with police where he was shot while wearing a bulletproof vest. That situation was where he was charged with murder but not convicted. He went to his father's house to heal. Then he returned to Chicago in July of 1934. He laid low in a brothel, which is like a whorehouse. And um, this brothel was owned by a woman that he knew. Once he got there, 
She act like everything was everything, and she alerted police. Being on the run and committing 24 bank robberies, including robbing four police stations. He had a bounty of captured, dead, or alive. And on July 22, 1934, local law enforcement and the FBI closed in on a movie theater that Dillinger was at with this female who owned the brothel. As Dillinger was leaving the theater, Dillinger started running and in the process he drew his gun. He was killed not too far from the movie theater. People can be seen in photos taking pictures of his dead body and soaking their napkins and handkerchiefs with his blood. They boldly cut pieces of his hair i mean just taking it as memorabilia and i think that's the sickest part about it would dillinger have stopped robbing banks would he have stopped breaking out of prisons no i don't think he would have I think that he was very content with what he was doing and he saw a great happiness in it. I don't know if that happiness lasted for long, but he did see a great happiness in it, um, in the life of a criminal. Now, back to the point of is he a gangster or not? My thing is... If you want to make excuses like he isn't a gangster, if you want to make excuses like, oh, that was a long time ago, of course, the prisons wasn't high tech and this, that, and the fourth. And if you want to say that about the bank robberies too, my thing is, just imagine how many people are in a prison versus the people that always plan to break out it's a lot of those and then there are the people that actually execute the plan what i feel about john dillinger is that he always followed his plan no matter how good no matter how many people he hurt and and there's a certain type of heart that you have to have to follow a very complicated plan I don't really view any of the crimes that he committed as easy. And I think that a lot of people, they want to say, oh, it was a long time ago, this, that, and forth. If it doesn't matter about that, I feel like you have to have heart and courage, confidence, somewhat of a ego to keep following your plan. And sometimes it may not work out as far as you going to jail but then you got another plan for a whole nother thing john dillinger deserves to be included in the conversation of mafia ties because he was a leader a lot of men followed his lead and had happiness and it might have been for a short amount of time because they got killed or imprisoned in part two, we will talk about his killing, going into detail, and I did want to talk about the FBI in part two. So make sure that you are subscribed, make sure you like the video, and I will see you then.